This video is uh, designed just to help navigate you through the prototype web pages and code that I've made for your Video Compass app. And I'm going to start by looking at the index.html file and talking through that and then move on to talk about how the JavaScript works. So you can see that the HTML file is on the screen here. And on the right, I've got your app playing inside the browser. So first of all, just so that we get a little overview of how this is organized, this uses jQuery mobile, which I know that you're already familiar with and already using. There's an intro page, which is the page that you're looking at on the screen here, which has a button that uh, triggers the video and the video page to play and load. And then there's the video page, which we'll see in just a moment when I hit the play button. And then finally, underneath this and outside of the page divs, there is a screen overlay, a couple of paragraph tags that have been styled to be fixed on the screen, regardless of what page loads. And you can see those here. And at the moment, they just say initial starting degrees reset to zero. So that's really the HTML page. It's very simple. There's not very much to it. Let's have a look at the JavaScript file before we actually play the video. And uh, let's talk about what, how that works and what happens. So the first thing you'll see when you load the JavaScript file is that I've made a little map that shows you the arrangement of the videos. And they're very similar to the arrangement that we had before, which is that you start and then you load video one and then you turn left or right. But actually, I've added an extra section as well where you can turn left again and it will load video four. So and those videos are referenced here. And you can see that each video is a variable and that the variable has various properties. It has a URL, which is the path to the actual MP4 file. And they're all in a folder called videos. And then there's another variable um, called interval, which uh, you'll see in a moment how that how that works. So when the page JavaScript page loads, the first thing that happens is actually down the bottom here. The first thing that happens is that the compass inside the phone is activated and uh, every 500 milliseconds it returns a compass heading and then it displays that here on the screen and it does that because when the compass loads it returns a function called on success which so that function runs every 500 milliseconds here it is here and all it does is it sets a variable called current heading to the to the heading that it's retrieved and prints that to the screen here, document dot get element by ID heading. And you can see that at the moment the browser is just displaying a series of kind of random values that uh, are used for testing. So they don't represent the actual real orientation of the computer in, in space. But if you were to do this on your phone, of course they would. So that's the first thing that happens when the page loads. The next thing, nothing else happens until you click the play video button. And the play video button is triggered here. So you can see this is an event listener that uh, when you click, it initiates a function or plays a function, runs a function called initiate video play. So let's have a look at that function now. And then I think we should press play and see how that works. So, and that's right at the top here, initiate video play is here and what this function does essentially is first of all load the video page that's on this line here line 33 and it uses a pop transition and this is a part of the kind of jQuery uh, code API to navigate between pages using JavaScript rather than links that are coded into the HTML and then it sets the video that is referenced in the HTML to play and it does another thing where it uses a piece of code called set interval and set interval really means just loop do again and again and again 
So set interval is set to loop this function called load video two or three. And it does this every 100 milliseconds. So let's, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna hit play and you'll see all of that happen and you'll see the first video load. Obviously, the way that this works on your phone is that if you rotate left or right, it will um, respond. But because the browser is delivering random compass headings, random bearings to the app running in the browser, um, it's going to behave in a slightly strange way. It may just work or not work because we don't have any control over the orientation of the of the device. So I hit play video. It pops yeah. open the video and um, starts playing and you can see that it's captured the initial orientation in an, of the phone and um, and actually has automatically triggered all of these functions to play the sequence of videos because the device thinks it's orientating itself uh, left and right kind of randomly so it just loads the videos you can see that there are messages being printed out of the screen here and we'll come across those in just a moment when this finishes you'll see that you get a dialogue an alert that will pop up on your phone as well that sort of says the video is finished you click ok and it resets everything and navigates you back to the start page ready to do the whole thing again so let's go back to the code now and have a look at how all of that works so we've seen how um, initiate video play starts triggering the function underneath it here load video two or three to loop every hundred milliseconds and what this function does this first thing it does is it checks to see how much of the video has played and that's on line 45 and it says if 10 seconds of the video have played then start um, looking to see if the user has rotated right or left so and that's broken down into two areas here here so if calculation rotation equals right and down here else if calculation rotation equals left so depending on where the user rotates left or right um, will depend on what's displayed on the phone which video loads and we'll see that in just a sec so let's assume that you do rotate right so we're going to run this section here so if calculate rotation which we'll look at in just a moment is another function returns right then this under everything inside these if statements this if statement will run and it first of all it will play the video um, video 3 and you can see which video that is up here video 3 so it's video underscore 3 dot mp4 and it will display on the screen over here uh, that you're going right because it is detected we're making a right turn so I'm just simply displaying that onto the screen and then um, it will then trigger another function called stop rotation calculation to stop checking the rotation of the phone because we have now know that the user's turn right and we don't need them to do, we don't need to continue checking that. It then also clears the interval which makes this loop uh, every 100 milliseconds because again we don't need this to continue to loop, to loop round. We know now that we're playing this video and actually we just kind of want to move on really to the next function and that's on the next line here so I've kind of built an extra function here and this this uh, an extra video load here so this now starts to trigger and using set interval another function called load video 4 to loop and that also is going to start checking to see if you've rotated the phone before it loads the next video and we'll move on to that in just a moment um, and then it re begin rotation calculation is another function and that which are and all these functions are listed down below so you can have a look at them in a moment um, and begin rotation calculation essentially resets the um, orientation of the phone so that whatever direction you're facing it will start calculating 90 degrees left or right from that point so it doesn't matter if you've moved or if the user has moved in their in their in their position in between loading the first video and this point here um, so that's obviously very useful and this was something that we talked about doing or I talked about doing last week with you so 
And I think the thing to point out here is that each one of these lines of code looks very simple. Play video and then the list of the video that's to play. But what's happening here is this is actually running a function that I've written called play video. And that does a number of things. So I think we should just have a look at that. So we have to scroll down to find play video. And here it is. So this function here. So play video essentially passes into the function um, the URL, in other words, the path to the video, which is, as you know, video slash video underscore three or whatever it might be. And it sets the source property of the video element on the page to that URL. It sets the current time to zero. In other words, it rewinds the, the video back to zero and it plays it. So those three lines of code there are triggered by running this function. And this obviously doing this really makes it a lot easier to understand what's happening here. Imagine if I'd put all those three lines of code in here to start getting very complicated. And actually, if you look at the earlier version of that, you'll, of this code, you'll see that that's exactly how it was written. And it's a bit more complex. This hopefully makes it easier for you to understand. So play video three triggers that function. And then the next thing is I'm displaying a message onto the screen to tell the user they're going right. You, you might not want to do that, but this is useful for testing. So and this runs another function that I've written called display. So if we go down here and have a look at it, there it is, one line function, display, and it passes into the function a message that you, you've seen um, in inverted commas saying you're now going right. And it prints that, all it does is it sets the inner HTML um, to that, the content of that message that's passed into the function. And that uh, is displayed on the result in the result paragraph, the paragraph with an ID of result, which displays down here on the screen. And this, because it's outside of the page structure, the jQuery page structure, it displays all of the time on the screen. Um, you know, you can just set this to zero or delete it or whatever you like, really. Uh, in your final video. I think this is very useful for testing. So let's go back. So stop rotation calculation. So there's a bunch of functions that I've written here to try, again to try and help you called begin rotation calculation, stop rotation calculation, and then calculate rotation. So we're going to have a quick look at those now too. And they're also down here. And you don't need to edit these. You just leave them where they are. And they're all here, basically. And these functions are the things that... Um, First of all, grab the current heading of the compass and set that as a sort of start point and then start um, allowing the code to check to see if the user has rotated left or right. And that happens here in this function called calculation rotation. Um, and I'm not going to talk through this uh, line by line, but essentially what happens is in this function calculate rotation is that if you rotate your phone left, it will return um, left. You can see that here in inverted commas. And if you rotate your phone right, it will return right. So that's obviously a great little tool to be able to then simply check whether the user has rotated left or right. And you can see it you being used here. So if calculation rotation equals right, then do all this stuff. If calculation rotation equals left, do all this stuff. So load a different video, essentially. So again, it's very simple to understand and uh, to write here in this function here, because all the work is being done down below, which you don't really need to worry about in these functions down here. So let's move on. So you can see how if we were rotating right, then we will play the video, display a message, stop the rotation calculation, so stop calculating whether the phone is going left or right, stop looping that function here and um, start looping the next function load video 4 and that's down here we'll look at that now um, to get ready to play the fourth video um, and if you look at my map you'll see here it is here's the fourth video so I've had an extra branch to this path than when you looked at it last to try and help you um, understand how you can build more branches to your video. So, so once video 4interval equals set interval load video 4 has, has triggered, 
it will start running load video for every 100 milliseconds. And this function does exactly the same as the previous function. Its syntax is identical. So let's just talk that through. So it says, if the video has been playing for more than five seconds, then display a little message to the user that says, try rotating left. And you'll see that if you try this out, you'll see exactly that happen. And if the calculation rotation detects a left turn, so if it returns left, then do all the stuff down here. And, that, and this is again is identical to the previous function we looked at. But let's just talk it through again. So this time, play video runs that play video function, but this time with a different video. And you'll see the video four is actually, um, in fact, uh, I've, I've set as a uh, video one, just so that uh, so that uh, you can just reuse some of some of the three one of the three videos you've already made. So I didn't have to make another video to have a fourth video. Um, and I'm displaying another message to the user, and this one simply says, <clears throat> you're going left. So you can put what you like in here, or nothing, however you like. Um, and then, once again, as soon as all of the load video, we know the video is loaded here and is playing, we've got the message to the user on the screen. So here I say, right, now I want to stop checking whether the phone is going left or right. And I also want to cancel that set interval process that loops this function around every 100 milliseconds because I no longer need this to loop around because the video is loaded, the screen's on the message and the video is playing. So I just actually am done with that and what I'm going to do now underneath here would be exactly to trigger us a ne next branch would be to do another set interval and load and trigger another video function and obviously I haven't written that yet, that's for you to add to and to write so that'll be your next branching section that you would um, add. So that's pretty much it really. So you can see that I've also in my comments blocked out the beginning and end of the video functions here. So let's just get those. There they are. And all of the code underneath here which are which displays the screen text, plays the video, um, does the reset. So this is a function here we haven't talked about monitors the reset of the uh, video, so when it detects the video has ended, it then sends an alert and navigates back to the start page and sets the video back to zero and pauses it, so essentially it's all ready to start again, remove the display from the screen. Um, so all of this stuff underneath and all of the compass functions underneath that here, which do all of the compass, gathering the compass heading, calculating whether the user is moving left or right, all of that you don't need to touch. You can just essentially use those functions to generate your left and right turns on your video. So I hope that's useful and I hope that uh, it makes some sense. I think it will obviously take you some time to work through this. And I think really the best thing is actually to fiddle around with it, make some changes, send different messages to the screen, load different videos, play around with all of these, all of these bits of code so that you kind of understand how they're, they're working and then you'll be able to add extra functions like this. So I guess the next function might be load video five or load video five or six. It might have a left or a right turn. Um, so in which case it would look more like this one. So you would literally almost be able to copy this, rename it and re and uh, change all of these, uh, change all of these um, elements to make it uh, relate to your next set of videos and your next left or right turn. Okay, there we go.